If you have seen any of my Dark Souls Remastered meme runs, you will notice one thing is always the same. I can't rat out runs effectively, I mean the use of the Black Knight Halberd. It is an obvious choice when it comes to speedrunning well because it can do this. With the damage, you would be dumb to use anything else when trying to go fast. Hello, I'm that idiot. Me and my infinite wisdom from pondering my orb decide to speedrun with only a bow. Typically using only a bow is seen in challenge runs, but this is a speedrun. I also understand there can be some confusions, so let me explain the arbitrary rules I've set up for this run. Here are the game rules for DSR and I'm not going to go through them. These rules were all followed as I'm just used to it, but the category rules I used were no Ron Warp. Without the Ron Warp glitch, I'm going to be killing all four lords. Now these are just the normal rules and I have to add some rules to fit this run. First, I can only deal damage to enemies with a bow. Some caveats to this rule are if I accidentally Goomba stomp an enemy and deal like 2 damage. It happens sometimes and does not make the run easier. Also, I can punch the one bow hollow near the starting equipment pickups in the asylum. This is not because I did this out of muscle memory and would invalidate the runs without allowing this because I make the rules. Second, no parries because I'm a masochist. Third impact, I can use Toki Bombs on the Bed of Chaos. My rationale is it does not deal damage to the boss's health bar and I refuse to fight the Bed of Chaos normally. Okay, maybe it is mostly the latter, but let's get into the run already. If you have played Dark Souls and you know about the two options in character creation that matter. For the starting class, I pick Hunter not only for its amazing stat distribution, but also because it starts with a bow. I'm going to need a weapon to help escape the tutorial, so this is sort of the only option. And because I'm not picking the Fee starting class for once, I pick the Master Key as my starting gift. The Master Key will allow me to open some doors without getting the key for the door. I only use it for the door that connects the value of the Drakes to the New Londo runes later in the run. This shortcut will be very useful later, saving a good amount of time. That is all for character creation, so I can arrive in the dingy cell I am all too familiar with. I acquired the key to escape the cell, nothing new. Something that is new is the menuing I do on the ladder. It seems pretty standard as I put the sword hilt into my left hand, unequip all my armor, and put the dark sign into my hotbar. However, I keep my gloves equipped to raise my equip load for easier menuing when I perform an air roll later. Sorry about all the setup that is needed for this run, but while I open the door to the asylum, I prep another glitch. I position my mouse over to the left arrow symbol in the inventory tab for a glitch called Prompt Swap Later at Andre. Once the door is finished opening, I skip past the fight because I don't have any firebombs and I can't use them anyways. Leaving for the door in the left of the arena, I make my way further into the asylum. In a long hallway is an archer that I'm allowed to hit. Let me explain, it is a habit to use black firebombs on the asylum demon and so is me punching the bow hollow. My hands may not seem like a bow, but they can project arrows. What I'm saying is my hands are a bow, stay mad. I'm very good at not being mad about that boulder that respawned in my tail cut meme run. At least I don't have to worry about it this time, but I do send the boulder down to break the wall. I don't perform the quit out to break the wall because I need to go to upper asylum to escape this area. With the key, I open the door up the stairs and I'm about to be weird. Rolling at the pile to help with aggroing the hollows, I acquire the bow. Equipping the bow and arrows, I start taking care of these three hollows by the fog gate. This is really slow, but trust me, it is going to help skip the asylum fight. There are three ways to escape the asylum without killing the boss. I'm going to be using the pickup and enter version, and if you are already familiar with the glitch, you can skip to here. This glitch is mainly used as a way to bypass AI triggers on fog gates, but it can be used differently here. To quickly explain the glitch, an item is dropped by a fog gate. Then, you want your character to line up in a certain way to get a specific angle. What angle to use depends on the side of the fog gate and the entry you want. The angle affects the turn when performing the glitch, so every gate will be different. Okay, this is good, but how is it performed? Well, it is very simple. You press an input bound to an action, and a different input also bound to an action slightly after the first input. In my case, I use E bound to action and R bound to action in the alternative binds. This can also be done by replacing one of the inputs with your controller action bind. I just find it's easier for me to use M and K for the glitch because it is most likely frame perfect. Let's go! After hitting the tight timings, you pick up the item and enter the fog gate with a weird turn. Collision also seems to stop working here as I can phase through the wall like a ghost. Most of the time, like I stated, this is to bypass an AR trigger, but here we want to leave the asylum. 
Heading into the right side of the fog gate, I drop my armor. The angle needed here is 296 and it is achieved with a lineup. Aiming with the bow, I look all the way down and back into the corner. If I am not moving backwards, my character's big head gets in the way of the visual cue I use. By moving backwards, I line up the left side of my screen until I cut off the left side of a J in the column's texture. You can see it right here and once I have this angle, I need to perform the inputs. Hitting both action binds with the right timing, the item is picked up and I start to turn into the wall. This causes some weird behavior as I start to float up and the camera gets locked into the wall. I want to start trying to move the camera, but it won't move just yet. When I get up high enough, the camera zooms out and starts moving again. This is a cue I use to let me know to start running into the wall before jumping backwards. I make this jump look easy, but it is really tricky with annoying character turnaround animations. This is why I jump to the right instead of the left. When I undershoot to the right, I can still get over the wall because it does not extend as far. Undershooting the jump to the left will result in a failed attempt. I should also mention that with testing, I've gotten away with not running towards the wall, but instead towards where I want to jump. This cuts out the turn issues, but I don't know how consistent this is. Pick up and enter is a new glitch and the asylum one is not commonly used. Most of what I said should be accurate, but it is not fully tested. Anyways, here's how it went in the run. The item gets dropped on the right side before I use the lineup to get the angle. Taking a breath before attempting the inputs, I get it first try and start walking into the wall. When I'm able to move the camera, I perform the jump backwards. Landing down below with only a slight broken foot, I grab the hidden soul that only gives 200 souls. A really good reward for those who are observant, unlike myself. It took me forever to learn that I could run up that weird geometry on the side for some better pathing to the crow. As I cross the rock, I jump into the trigger leading to Fire Link. In the shrine, I sit down at the bonfire to help to get the full 10 Estus from it. Coming up is a really fun and not a RNG nightmare, but first I need to get there. The hollows play nice this time and I can get through to the berg pretty easily. Except for the doorway, it moved, I swear. After getting up the staircase, I jump across to the battlements where I'm going to perform Capra Skip. On the ladder, I start to climb down and then climb back up. Once my character starts to climb up, I stop moving until I see my character twitch. When I see the twitch, I tap A to move slightly to the left getting put on top of the ladder. From here, I am with a bow to help myself line up the roll over to the out of bounds section of the battlement. Dropping down to the top of the Capra shortcut tunnel, I'm going to perform a soul dupe. If you are familiar with how to soul dupe, you can skip to here. To perform the dupe, I first open the settings and hover over brightness. If it's selected, I press A and then right bumpers slightly after. When done correctly, the brightness menu will be over the inventory tab. One thing to understand about this menuing is that the brightness in the brightness menu needs to be highlighted when selecting an item. It just won't work if you have it selected, but I don't have to worry about that right now. The soul I am duping happens to be in a perfect position. By hitting up twice, I will have the soul selected with brightness still highlighted. When I get this, I press A to open the items menu. It looks like this, but it is underneath the brightness menu. You can see in the top left that jumbled together are the adjust brightness text and the use selected item text. Now, second thing about the brightness menu is that defaults is where the quantity storage is stored. We want to go to defaults with use item selected, but going down will also move the items menu down as well. To bypass this, I press down and right on the d-pad at the same time. This moves the brightness menu down once without moving the items menu. Now I can head over to defaults with use items selected and dupe the soul by the quantity storage. Let me explain quantity storage to explain how I can dupe this soul. Quantity storage is the number the game stores when you interact with a quantity prompt or buying an item. We want to use that value to dupe the soul but what is the quantity we have stored? This is where it gets interesting as the stored quantity typically resets on load screens. When we arrived in Firelink there was no load screen but because I dropped the armor the quantity stored is still zero. Dropping items that don't drop of a quantity prompt seem to not affect the quantity storage, keeping it at its default. The game defaults to zero between load screens, but you can't really have a quantity of zero. Because of this, when I go to use the soul, I get a quantity prompt where I can use up to 99 of the soul. In the run, I struggle a bit, but eventually I get it. Popping the soul, I've turned it from 200 to around 20,000 souls, so let us do some shopping. I purchase five blooming moss, 
four poison arrows, and finally I spend the last of it on large arrows. Leaving her menu, I roll down below to the tower before rolling down further to the roof of the depths. Even though I just explained a different glitch, we are still performing Capra Skip. From this extended part in the roof, I jump down below to the roof of the bonfire tunnel. Healing up before continuing on, I head to the left for a different way to get back in bounds. I drop down and then jump up to the right to get onto this roof. It looks like I'm about to walk off to my death, but there is some collision here above this terrible place. After healing up, I try some arrows to bait the rats before dropping back in bounds. Honestly, I don't think the arrows helped. This part right here is just roll and pray. So many of my runs have died at this spot, but I'm able to slip by the channel at this time with only minor bites. All of this was for one little titanite shard. I know I could have gotten one elsewhere, but this is the fastest, most consistent way. Keeping with that consistency, I quit out here to reset the enemies. Loading back in, I shoot an arrow over towards the big rats to hopefully distract them as I try to go by. Their instant ledge attack is brutal, but the channel of tracking is pitiful. And for once, the rats are also pitiful and let me pass. On the fog gate, I equip the two arrows I bought earlier, but get hit in the process. Playing it safe, I'm going to sip some Estus before continuing on. This part is easy because I don't think From envision people going this way. Except this Torch Hollow, they are ready and do too much damage. I dodge here, just in case. There is another Torch Hollow that blocks a passage that I choose to kill to get by. I have to be careful when doing this as sometimes the Hollow will want to come out. The issue is when you are standing there waiting for them to move and they don't. This time around it goes smoothly so I can get past. Past this door is an important item I need, but it is not easy to get. Dropping into the water, I run towards the hollow and stay to the side to avoid a dog. Up the stairs, I'm going to bait out the dog by the chest before going for it. Sometimes I have to quit out when opening the chest, but I got away without it this time. Not for too long as I get swarmed and try to get away to dark sign. Luckily, I can get the dark sign off because dying is really slow. The timing method is in-game time, so on load screens it pauses, and the slow death animation still ticks away at that time. On the load screen after the dark sign, I split for the large ember, the item I got from the chest, at 5 minutes and 58 seconds. The large ember will allow me to upgrade my weapon to plus 10. There is still a lot of setup I want to do, so I won't be upgrading just yet. From Firelink, I make my way down to the new Londo runes from the elevator in Firelink. On the ride down, I'm going to do some menuing while waiting. The blooming moss is put in my hotbar and all the armor besides the gloves are dropped. Once the elevator has reached the bottom, I ascend it back up. Get used to that because I know I did. First thing I do in New Londo Runes is fall on Hollow number 23. It does 3 damage and does not matter, it is fine, but I'm not fine because of this area. These ghosts are so dumb. How come a ghost can go through a wall, but I can't go through a ghost? Past the first set of ghosts, I climb up the stairs and pass by the ghost that tries to block me. I'm trying something here while I stop at the second doorway before walking to the center left of the room. Once I get halfway, I hold block and run into the final ghost blocking the doorway. It did not go as planned, but I got by. I was supposed to roll the ghost new type attack. The next set of ghosts don't have the same ability, allowing me to run past where I can make it to the fog gate. From here, I'm pretty much free. Running along this weird pathway, I sip some Estus and quit out at the stairs. After loading back in, I start shooting Ingward with the large arrows. One headshot and three body shots is enough to aggro him with this damage. When he starts running at me, I switch to poison arrows to apply poison. It only takes three arrows to poison, but I grabbed four just in case I missed. I also shot the last one, even though it is not needed, I just wanted to get rid of it. Out of poison arrows, I use the large arrows to start pelting Ingward. The poison increases my DPS here, but once the health bar is showing 450 damage, I leave. Spending time shooting him some more is not worth it when I can just let the poison do the work as I grab some more items. Jumping past the broken staircase and rounding the corner, I get hit by this dumb ghost attack before picking up a 1k soul. I get hit again, and I want to complain about that ghost in particular. They will pre-fire me around the corner, so I have to pre-roll their attack. This time, they did not do the fast attack, so I get hit anyways. It is so dumb, but whatever, near the seal is the weapon of the run. Avoiding the seal, I head up the stairs and grab the composite bow hidden around the corner before healing. On my way back down, I receive the key to the seal from Ingward, magically I guess. I use that key to open the door to the seal. 
Gaining access to the seal, I open it, and once the cutscene is skipped, I drop down below. Some more Estus sipping before I run at the drakes that somehow did not get washed away by the water. They are good drakes and allow me to get to the ladder unharmed, so I don't mind too much. On the ladder, I equip the composite bow, unequip the broken hilt, and change the order of the 1k soul to the top of the menu. This will make the soul easier to dupe later, but not right now. Right now, I pick up the red tearstone ring and take the plunge. It is very easy to die right here to the drakes, but I roll away before healing. Making my way deeper into New Londo, I strafe all the dark rays who, to be fair, have been underwater for a while. Walking past the fog gate, I make a right and head up the stairs. I continue heading around and making my way up higher to get to the chest. This chest has a very large ember that will allow me to upgrade weapons to plus 15. Can't worry about that right now as I have dropped down and made my way into the courtyard. I shoot the fake wall behind the dark race before making my way to it. There is another wraith that blocks the chest and I aggro it before turning back around. The first wraith must have been embarrassed and went back down into the deep dark depths. Its friend does not seem too happy about this as I go for the chest. I'm able to get the Titanite chunk, but I'm unable to get the dark sign. Now we get to sit here and watch how long it takes to die in this game. Once the game is finally loading, I split for the very large ember at 11 minutes and 11 seconds. Back in Firelink, I once again take the elevator down to New Londo Runes. On the ride down, I dupe the 1k soul I picked up earlier for 99k souls. After the dupe, I equip the red tearstone ring and drop the short bow. At the bottom, the elevator is sent back up because I will use it again. However, this time in the New Londo Runes, I take a right to the Valley of the Drakes. The master key allows me to open this door early and make my way through it. I could have avoided the dark graves after picking up the chunk and somehow made my way into the valley from the large door. Doing so would save around a minute, but it is a little cursed. Instead, I choose the easier option where I pick up the 2k soul from the EP dragon. I still have to encounter the drakes, but a lot less of them. Speaking of encountering drakes, the first one can combo me to death. I watch for which attack it does and make a decision on which side to go based on the attack. In this case, I get the lightning sweep attack where I can just strafe to the left of the drake to avoid it. Only one more drake to worry about and usually it is not this cursed. Doing the instant lightning attack had me a little worried so I have to take a less direct route to the elevator. Sending the elevator up, I walk off the elevator and then quit out in its default position. This is an elevator warp and it allows me to be warped up on certain elevators. However, this glitch may be simple, but it will be way more useful later. Loading back in, I'm at the top in the Darkroot Basin. Since I am here, why not grab the Grass Crest Shield? It increases my stamina regen by 10 points per second. Faster regen means more running, and more running means I go faster, but it does not make my menuing faster. As I pick up the shield, I try to menu it into my right hand, but I suck. The Halber Knight is also not too great and allows me to slip past up to the basin. Okay, so there is nothing in the basin for me. There is a crystal lizard, and this lizard when killed has a chance to drop either a titanite chunk or a large titanite shard. One of the pickups could be avoided if you were light on the RNG of this lizard. Only issue is you don't know which one will drop if it will even give the secondary drop at all. Sometimes you would only get twinkling titanite, and I would prefer to get upgrading done all at once with Andre. He's not too far away, I just have to make my way past the demon foliage and the titanite demon. Those two are not too bad to get past on my way to the undead parish. At Andre, I buy 9 titanite shards, the crest of Artorius, 999 wooden arrows, a pike, and then I perform a glitch. That is a lot, so let me break it down. The 9 shards are for leveling up my weapon. The crest is to open a door later for faster pathing to Sif. 999 wooden arrows will be used to store a quantity of 999 for a dupe at the bonfire. The pike is used for its weight of 10 to set up a glitch later called an air roll. Now for the glitch I'm about to do. If you are already familiar with material duping, you can skip to here. There is more to the glitch with menu indexes, but we won't have to worry about that for this run. I choose to opt in a generous money route to avoid having to think, so I hover over the lawn sword. This is where having the mouse position over the arrow symbol in the inventory tab at the start of the run is used. Switching over to the arrows tab, I'm going to press left click and A at the same time. Left click will switch the menu over to the weapons tab because of my mouse position. Hitting A on the controller will buy the arrows. 
When executed properly, the quantity prompt from buying arrows will be swapped to buying the lawn swords instead. This is known as a prompt swap and has moved the quantity prompt from the arrows to the sword. Buying a weapon with a quantity prompt is not something you can normally do, but I'm going to buy 11 swords. Instead of receiving 11 separate swords like you might expect, I receive one sword that is 11 swords. This does not affect the damage of the weapon, but instead affects it in two different ways. First, the useless thing to me is I did increase the weight of the sword to 11 swords. I don't need that weight, instead I want the quantity of this glitched weapon. It has a quantity of 11 swords, but a weapon should have a quantity of 1. This is what we want to abuse here with the way Dark Souls calculates quantity storage when buying an item. I go to buy the sword again, but this time I walk out of Andre's range. The game has done some interesting math here to give me an interesting number for my quantity storage. Dark Souls takes the max quantity of a weapon, in this case 1, and subtracts it by the quantity of the weapon we have, 11. 1 minus 11 is negative 10, which is a number you should not really get. With this negative number, I open my inventory and perform the soul dupe from earlier. Big difference this time as I target the upgrade materials I picked up. First, I select the chunks because they are easier, and then I bring up their menu under the brightness menu. Grayed out in the materials menu is use item, but you can't use it. This works in my favor, as it can be hovered over and starts there. Now, all I have to do is head down and over to defaults because I want to drop the item instead of using it this time. This keeps the menuing effortless, and the math also stays simple. When dropping an item, the game subtracts the amount you want to drop from the item. In this case, I can select to drop negative 10, which will give me 10 more Titanite chunks. After doing the first dupe, I need to reset my quantity storage, so I open Andre's shop. Opening the buy prompt for the sword again and leaving the menu will store the negative 10 for me to use on the next material. The large Titanite shard is in a weird spot in my menu, and I have to do some menuing to be able to dupe it. I press down once, which will move the brightness menu and the inventory down one. Hitting left trigger, I am brought to the top of the inventory, but the brightness menu has not moved. I just have to hit down once again, and now I have a large shard selected with brightness also selected. From here, the dupe is like the chunks, giving me 11 large Titanite shards in total. Alright, finally after all this, I can upgrade my weapon with Andre. First, I upgrade the composite bow to plus 5 before leaving Andre's menu. Hopefully, Andre can smell the embers on me and will ask for them. He wants the large ember, and I give it to him. Now, I can modify the bow to ascend it to plus 6, and then reinforce it to plus 10. Backing out of the menu once again, I speak to Andre who thankfully asked for the very large ember. Sometimes he can be annoying about it, but this time I can easily send my weapon to plus 11. I can only upgrade my weapon to plus 14 with the materials I have, but getting a Titanite slab would not have been worth the time cost. A better time waste is spending the last of my money on large arrows to max them out to 999 just in case. Leaving Andre, I head up the stairs to the bonfire and go to drop the wooden arrows. Canceling the drop, I have stored a quantity of 999 that I'm going to use to dupe a soul at the Undead Parish Bonfire. The soul dupe is done exactly like the others, but this time I can use up to 999 of the 2k soul. I receive a little under 2 million souls before sitting down to level up at the bonfire. Vitality is leveled up to 46 as the extra health is extremely needed. When dealing with bosses like the Four Kings and Nito, some extra health can go a long way. Especially with terrible damage, but the stamina cost from the bow is not bad. Still, I level Endurance to 24 for a glitch later. And to deal with the low damage as best as I can, I level both Strength and Dexterity to 37. The Composite Bow is one of those disgusting quality weapons that scales 60% with both Dex and Strength. From my sparse testing, the Composite Bow was the best bow I could get. The damage will definitely show on the first boss, Gargoyles. I make my way up the parish and into the church. Before heading up the stairs to the best room in the game, I grab the Firekeeper Soul and then head up the stairs. There's a Blotter Knight that is trying to block me, but I just bait him down the stairs by standing still. When it comes down, I swirl past and continue on to the best room in the game. My favorite part is I can't hit the hollow out of the way, so I just had to rely on RNG here. There's also the human factor as I decided to try something new I never tested before by shooting an arrow. This resulted in me having to quit out to reset the room. After loading back in, I'm able to run to the door and atomize the ego of this hollow with a strafe. The ladder to the gargoyles is easy to access once past that poor fellow. On the ladder, I check my stats, most definitely not because I leveled up resistance instead of strength for an entire day of runs. Anyways, I enter the fight and trigger the boss fight. I get to show off some of the weird things with the bow, where if you are too close to an enemy, the bow just stops working. 
Within a couple of shots, I recollect myself and do some decent damage to the gargoyle. The first gar goes down and only 4 shots, which may seem like a lot of damage. Remember, this is a plus 14 weapon. It is only going to get worse. At least the second garg is half HP, so I only have to fire 4 more arrows because I suck with the bow. Still, it went well enough and I can now ring the first bell of awakening. By climbing up the ladder, I'll change the order of the twin humanities the boss drops for a dupe later. Because I can already hear the screaming too. Perform Sin's Gate Skip, it is faster! You know what? I wish I could, but the bow can't repost. In the given rule set, I can't skip Sin's Gate, which would have saved so much time. Ringing the two bells is required to get access to Sin's Fortress, so I ring the first bell of awakening. After the animation plays, I try to prep the dark sign before the cutscene, but fail. Second time around, I get it, so shut up, I don't want to talk about it. During the load screen, I split for gargoyles at 18 minutes and 35 seconds. Loading back into the parish, I make my way to Firelink from the shortcut elevator in the church. There are two bells of awakening, and I'm going to ring the second one in Blighttown. I need to get there, and the fastest way is going for Firelink. Jumping onto the elevator, I drop all the weapons I won't need, as well as the gargoyle helmet that dropped from the boss. The weapons are useless to me, and I would prefer a cleaner inventory for menuing. Once I'm done with the menu, I wait for the elevator to open up where I can drop down. I don't drop down right away, but wait a little bit. There is no science to this, just vibes. Making my way through Firelink, I jump through the windows and pick up 6 firebombs for Bed of Chaos later before continuing on. Leaving Lotrek alone, I take the new Londo elevator again. Arriving at the bottom, I send the elevator back up for later and enter the Valley of the Drakes. Valley is connected to the exit of Blighttown, so I can easily make my way through Blighttown. The infested barbarians are not an issue, and I can make my way to where I'm going to fall to the bottom. To fall to the bottom, I perform the Blighttown Plunge. If you are already familiar with it, you can skip to here. This glitch is two glitches put together, but both of them will be separated later in the run. I'm going to explain the two glitches separately, and then explain how they are used together here. The first glitch I'm going to cover is a meme roll, air roll, or chain roll. It goes by many names, but it's used to negate fall damage from lethal falls. In the remastered version of Dark Souls, the version I am running, it is way easier to set up than the Prepare to Die edition. To perform the glitch in DSR, you must get your equip load ratio to greater than 25%, but less than or equal to 29.1%. When you are in this range, you can just roll off from up high and start air rolling with some limitations. Stamina is still being depleted, so you need enough stamina to roll when you reach the bottom. A smart thought would be just to delay the roll and wait, but the rolls have to be chained together. This also means that the first roll is the most important roll in this glitch. We want to use the invincibility frames at the start of a roll to negate the fall damage. Some air rolls are easier than others, but the one I'm about to perform is unique. Like I stated, this is going to be combined with another glitch. This other glitch is a plunge fall damage cancel. It is performed by doing a plunge attack on a slope. The plunge attack goes into the landing animation, but because we slid off a slope, it is still playing while we fall. During this time, a roll can be queued. Every weapon type has a different recovery animation, which will affect when the roll happens. For the Blighttown plunge, I want my fists out for the plunge, but when I just use it, I roll too early. However, I can go into an air roll from this queued roll to be able to negate the fall damage. For the air roll, I have the composite bow, leather gloves, grass crest shield, and pike equipped. All this brings my equip load to 16.8, with my max equip load being 64. Taking 16.8 and dividing it by 64, I get my equip load ratio of 26.25%. Yeah, this is what the piking gloves are for. From this setup, I run off this direction from the plank that juts out and plunge. The roll is queued, and I spam the roll button to go into an air roll from it. Rolling down below, I negate the fall damage and unequip the pike. Taking more fall damage, I start rolling through the swamp towards Quaylog. Looking at my health may have some worried, but this is intentional. I want to set up RTSR for Quaylog because I'm comfortable with the fight. Avoiding the infested barbs, I am put into RTSR range from the poison as I get to the mouth of the cave. The blooming purple moss is used to remove the poison before continuing on to the boss. Quaylog has a mechanic where if you hit her human body, she will stagger, even with a bow. I'm going to try and stunlock her, but it is a little tricky. Entering the fight, I wait to see what opener she gives and see the jump attack. Running under her, I avoid it and miss two shots. Because of my skill issue, I need to spend some time dodging her attacks before attempting the stagger again. This time, I manage to hit and start shooting arrows with a slight delay to stagger her. 
If I just spam the arrows, she would not get caught in a stagger loop. She also won't get staggered if you messed up your aim and miss. Dodging again, I have to wait to get my third chance. When I get that opportunity, I take it and kill Koilog with three arrows, ending the fight. When she is defeated, I heal up before continuing on to not die to fall damage in a bit. I make my way to the bell, ring the bell while equipping the firebombs into my hotbar, and roll down the hole in the middle. Landing down below, I head through to Koilog's sister, but this creature with some back problems blocks the way. Speaking to him, I ask him to move, and while he slowly does that, I dupe the twin humanities I got from the gargoyles earlier. After the dupe, I speak to Quaylog, where I reinforce my Estus Flask of the Firekeeper Soul from the Undead Parish. Then, I enter the Daughter of Chaos Covenant and give her 99 humanities. Doing this will open a shortcut later, allowing me to skip the Demon Fire Sage and Centipede Demon Fight. Once the humanities are gone, I decide to do the same and Dark Sign back to the Undead Parish. While the timer is paused in the load screen, I split for Quaylog at 23 minutes and 13 seconds. Getting up from the bonfire, I make my way right into Sin's Fortress. I find Sins to be one of the easiest segments because it is nice and consistent. Most of this area's difficulty comes from lack of knowledge, but once you know it, it is easy. It also helps that the snake enemies are dumb, but the blades are also a threat. Timing my runs, I avoid the blades, but do play it safe just because I don't want to embarrass myself. The lightning snake can be annoying, but the projectiles are straight without fail. It would have been more of an issue if they blocked the door correctly. I'll take this mistake to make it past them and watch the snake get flattened by a boulder that did not just spawn in. After the boulder has passed, I run up to the fog gate, pass the pressure plate trap, and run into the boulder area. With my health, I know the boulder won't kill me, so I run up towards the control room. Sprinting into this corner, I get hit by the boulder on purpose before getting up. Moving on to the next arrow pressure plate trap, I stand still and let all three arrows hit me. This is an RTSR setup for the boss coming up. Even with my health this low, I'm not too concerned. Mostly. Blades are getting harder to pass, but I'm used to it. Up the stairs is a snake that blocks the way, which is usually hit with the fist to push them back. I can't do that, so instead I one-shot it with the bow. Now I can make my way past it to the final set of blades. The blade cycle concerned me, so I waited before sprinting across. As I start dashing through them, I'm almost hit by a lightning bolt from behind. That was a little close, but I'm able to make it to the easiest section of Sen's Fortress. Mostly. Outside is very easy because the giants are not paid enough to put 100% into their job. They only throw the boulders at scripted locations shown with fire blast marks on the ground. When I just avoid items and sprint past, they are too slow to catch up to me and hit me. There is no challenge left besides the hardest part of Sins, a hollow archer named Bob. He is blocking the final door to the boss, so I will need to kill him. Dodging the first attack, I back up and go for an attack. The arrow misses because I was too close and I get hit by a bolt, almost dying. Thankfully Bob moved and I entered the iron golem fight with enough health. As long as the health is not zero, you are still alive. It is pretty risky to set up RTSR for golem, but there is a reason. RTSR will increase the damage of the bow to over 400 reaching the damage threshold to start the wobble. Baiting out an attack from the golem, I aim at the ankles and shoot, missing the ankle entirely. Avoiding the follow-up attack, I get lucky and the golem once again position themselves to fall. Aiming the bow, I shoot the ankle, this time dealing 407 damage. Shooting the ankle again, dealing over the 200 damage threshold will cause the golem to fall, and if I position it correctly, it falls off the bridge to its death. Once it is dead, I heal up before making my way to the circle that teleports me to Anor Londo. The start of this area is very much a, just look at the views, this place is massive. Of course, they put a very long elevator ride on the required path that I don't like taking. Instead, I'm going to meme roll. Setting up the meme roll like I did the plunge, I walk along this vertical line, and once I reach this horizontal line in the tiles, I roll off. This one is different, as there's a death cam here that will try to kill me, so I make sure to roll off the ground and quit out. During this quit out, I split for Iron Golem at 26 minutes and 59 seconds. Loading back in, I meme roll down below to the buttresses and unequip the pike. Running up the butts, I perform a jump to hit the railing, canceling the landing animation. This allows me to immediately sprint into the rafters room and climb up the ladder. It is a little concerning that I have not been hit by a throwing knife from the painted guardians in forever. Really concerning, but hey, I run across the rafters without falling. The first guardian does not run at me, allowing me to slip past and perform Namu. Namu is a tricky jump from this part in the rafters to save a second to the fog gate. Entering the gate, I turn the camera to watch behind me because the guardians are chasers. One of them throws a knife, but it is really slow and easy to dodge. Turning the lever to the big elevator, I run around it and avoid the armored garg. 
Climbing up the really big stairs, I encounter the Sentinels, who are also giant. Gwen is really compensating for something, but these Sentinels do have a sweep attack that can hit me as I go past. It tries to get me with it, but I dodge the attack. Next up are the Batwing Demons, but they are easy to deal with. I just run past them and watch behind me for their projectile attacks. The first group does not give me anything to dodge, and the second group is the same. Oh no wait, they, they do the projectile attack that I strafe. Hey look, it's here, the home of the Anorlando Snipers. To deal with them, I'm going to jump to the second window and quit out. Loading back in, the Silver Knight that blocks the way pulls out the sword and I can bait them to fall off. They try to poke me and slip off, allowing me to get to the interior section of Anorlando. Before making my way to the boss, I grab the bonfire for safety reasons. ONS is a really good boss and I have nothing bad to say about it. This is why, after grabbing the bonfire, I make my way up the stairs. Unlike other runs, I don't perform the jump, instead I head over to the Mimic and let it chomp me. Mimic RTSR setup, let's go! With all the health I have, this is a good and consistent way to get RTSR, but once it spits me out, I'm not in range. Don't worry, there is a fall coming up that will put me in range. Heading back down the stairs, I perform the stairs jump to skip a majority of this area. I can enter the main hall, where I'm going to fall off the stairs. Smacking into the ground, I toggle escape the landing and make my way to ONS. After entering the fight and triggering the cutscene, I quit out. This is to spawn in Ornstein as I'm going to AI break them with the pickup and enter glitch. After dropping the item in the right corner, I use my stamina to line up the angle. Looking all the way down, I put the right side of my stamina bar to be touching the horizontal line closest to the door. Tapping W, I turn, giving myself an angle of 41, and all I have to do now is hit the frame perfect inputs. Okay, so I failed the first try. I reset up for the second try and struggle with trying to get the slight turn. This made me wonder if walking slightly forward really does affect the glitch, and uh, it does not affect it. I just wasted time doing this, but at least once I get it, I hit the inputs. Turning into the wall, I'm spit out past the AI triggers and can now run up to Ornstein. He gets bullied, but now that he is dead, Super Smo is actively trying to kill me. The shovel attack was his constant go-to when I was using a bow against him. Using the pillars to block the attack, I try to hit away at him from afar with one arrow at a time. It takes a little bit to kill him, but the RTSR helps make this a little faster. When he goes down, I'm in a good position to get onto the elevator before it goes up. Once up, I sprint to the door and perform the first door quit out of the run 35 real minutes into it. That is crazy, but quitting out in the door will skip the door opening animation. Some doors take forever to open, and because this run is time with in-game time, it is faster to quit out. Loading back in, the door is open, so I can shoot Guinevere to receive the Lord Vessel. Sorry, it is faster than talking to her, and I also need Dark and Orlando to grab a bonfire. To trigger the cutscene, I run over to her before turning around. Skipping the banner with the gesture menu, I dash over to the ledge and fall down below to my death. Because Anorlando is dark, when I die, I am brought to the Anorlando bonfire at the very beginning that I skipped. During the load screen, I split for ONS at 32 minutes and 39 seconds. Resting at the bonfire, I warp away to the undead parish. With the Lord Vessel, it is now time to take on the four lords, but they each have a golden foggy that blocks me. To remove that, I have to place the Lord Vessel at the Firelink Altar. Frampt is awake because I run the two bells, but there is another giraffe that can take me to the altar. Koth is located in the abyss after defeating the four kings. I'm going to need to beat them anyways, and they are one of the four lords who do not have a golden gate. It just felt like the thing to do, so I need to grab the Covenant of Artorius Ring to traverse the abyss. The Keeper of the Ring is a giant wolf that Artorius keeps off a leash. I know you all love Sif, but what are you going to do when they see a toddler? That is right, nothing, just like the Forest Hunters. They let me run right past them while putting up an attempt to hit me. Only time they do their job is when I fail to run up the stone railing. I was trying to skip down below to a chest, but after getting hit, I just go the normal way. Opening the chest, I receive the stone armor that will be useful and make my way to the dog that does not bite. Along the way, I heal up because Sif is a really, really annoying boss fight. Period. After triggering the boss fight, you can see it in action. Sif likes to jump out of the way and what is that damage? I do nothing to the sword dog and I am most definitely not comfortable using RTSR for this fight. Look at that damage, Sif just hit me for half my health bar. Am I playing Elden Ring? Oh wait, that is the wrong clip, sorry. From all this damage, Sif gives me an RTSR setup and I heal back up to full because Sif thankfully gave me a breather. You have seen how this fight is going, I am not doing RTSR because of this. Here is some more complaining, I need to use a lock on for this boss but sometimes it misses. I hate this fight so much. 
but after too much time, Sif goes down, giving me the Covenant of Artorius reign. After warping away, I split for Sif at 36 minutes and 8 seconds. With the ring needed to fight the four kings, I warped to Firelink to take the elevator down to New Londo again. During the elevator ride, I put the ring on, and when the ride reaches the end, I will send it back up. There is still some use for the elevator. The ghosts are no longer a big issue this time. With the water drained, I can easily drop down and make my way past the Dark Wraiths. Entering the fog gate for the boss fight, I drop down without hitting any of the annoying parts of the stairs that jut out. While dropping, I open my inventory and get ready to equip the stone armor set. The wear good armor and spam attack for the four kings is more than just a meme. It is just accurate. Knowing where the first king spawns in, I make my way to it. When it has spawned in, I get close and just start spamming arrows. It is very hard to die in this segment, even with my terrible luck. If my health drops low enough, I just heal off my Estus and poise through attacks. My damage is really bad, and I'm not comfortable with RTSR, even with a plus 5 Black Knight Halberd. This means I'm going to have to kill all four kings, and this may come as a shocker, but I do that. Although, it would have been nice to be able to deal some extra damage to skip at least one of the king spawns. One interesting thing I do is take my armor off for the final king. This may seem scary, but I don't feel like menuing the armor later. After landing the final arrow to the total health bar of the four kings, they are defeated. A bonfire and cough should spawn in, but now I have to spam for cough's dialogue. It is very long, but towards the end is a dialogue box that I need to select yes. If I hit no, it will just disappear into the abyss, and it sucks. I did not mess it up, so I am brought to the Firelink altar where I place the Lord Vessel and warp to the Anor Londo bonfire. During the load screen, I split for the four kings at 40 minutes and 46 seconds. The golden fog gates are now gone, and I want to go shove a nerd in a locker. What? Sif has been kidnapping women and turning them into piscas. He is a bad, wait, no, unsatisfactory dragon, but first I have to get through the Duke's archives to get to him. Some boars are the first obstacle, but I make my way past them to an elevator. Reaching the top, there are crystal fellows everywhere that I have to avoid. Also, a channeler is here just above them and be annoying. Following a path, I make my way to the next elevator where I'm going to perform Duke Warp. You can skip to here if you already know this glitch. Remember that elevator warp I mentioned in passing? Well, it is going to be used here to skip the prison. From the right side of the elevator, I pull the lever and put myself into meme roll range. Once the elevator starts to move up, I quit out. Loading back in, I'm going to lock on to a sentient crystal with a bow. Then I roll into the pillar and roll off by quitting out in the... I messed it up. That damage is ridiculous, but I can still try again. While making my way up the staircase, I died, and I did not notice how dumb the death was. A crystal individual hit my feet from under the staircase, but it does not kill me. What kills me is the arrow that hit because I got staggered by that BS attack. This loses me a couple minutes, but I make it back to the elevator. The elevator's at the top, so I have to send it down and quit out to send it down instantly. Although, I did not really need to do this and could have attempted the warp again. Oops. Well, whatever, I reset up the glitch the same way, but this time after loading back in, I quit out of the elevator's default position. Once back in game, I have been warped up to the top and I could just meme roll down below. This meme roll is super easy, but the crystal fellow blocking the way is a nuisance. Shooting it with a bow is enough to knock it out of the way and I can make my way to the end of the archives. Personally, I'm not a fan of ladders, so I meme roll down below skipping it. Here's a fun RTSR setup. I equip the chest piece of the stone armor to raise my defense and then get munched on by the mimic. My health is still not low enough to be in RTSR range, but there is still more damage to take. After walking through the fog gate, I drop down below taking some fall damage. Avoiding the large crystal beans, I make my way into the crystal cave. There is a slope I use here to take more fall damage bringing me into RTSR range. I make my way across the visible walkways, avoid slipping off crystal walkways, and make my way to the clam room. For the clams, I use some movement to bait out the clams to avoid them from entering the fight. Being honest here, I just copy other runners and I have no idea what I'm doing. I did something right as no clams were allowed in this fight, so I break C's blue coward's crystal. While he is upset, I start to pelt arrows into his core to deal more damage. With RTSR, the damage is really good for a bow. I pay attention to his attacks and avoid them by pelting away. Some fights are easier with RTSR and Seif is one of them. After Seif is dead, I dark sign away and split for him at 48 minutes and 5 seconds. Next lord I want to knock out of the way is the Bed of Chaos, but I was not able to grab the Daughter of Chaos bonfire. Once again, I take the new Londo elevator for the final time to get back into Blighttown. 
I perform the meme roll down to the swamp and then roll through the poo water back to Quelog's domain. This is why I wish I could have done Sin's gate skip, all because of this run to Quelog's domain right here. At least it is not as bad as a sprint to the everlasting dragon. <laughs> After running for a bit, I get to the Daughter of Chaos bonfire and rest at it. I did not need to grab it, but just wanted to be safe. With the poison out of my system, I enter the demon runes. After rolling while sliding down this slope, I'm going to perform ceaseless skip. From this dilapidated pillar, I shoot an arrow towards a Dorito in the terrain. This will cause Capra to look up at it and walk off the cliff. To get down from here, I jump and perform a plunge fall damage cancel. Rolling forward, I use safe spots in the lava and heal up as I go. I'm still not comfortable enough with this glitch to explain it, and explaining it just kind of turns into a tutorial. There will be a link in the description for this glitch as well as every other glitch used. This time though, I have learned the end segment better and make it past the lava with half my est is still left. Getting to Bed of Chaos will be easy, but first I drop down to where the bonfire should be. For some reason, the bonfire here is tied to Ceaseless Death, so because he is still alive, there is no bonfire. Love this for me. At least it is only the Bed of Chaos, and I would never die to it. I also won't die to these basic enemies outside the Fire Sage fight either. They are easily passed, and I can take a right to skip both the Fire Sage Demon and the Centipede Demon. I open the giant covenant door that leads to Los Isolith, avoiding all the lava. Loading back in, I follow the Chaos Bug with a Sunlight Maggot and kill it to make the Tomb of the Giants visible for you all. It is not because I still have not learned Blind Tomb of the Giants. We don't have to worry about that area right now, and honestly, I don't care for this one either. The Titanite Demon is avoided by shooting it before running past, and the Daughter of Chaos is avoided leading to the boss. Like I said at the start, I'm going to use Tohi Bonds because this boss sucks. After sliding down, I run forward and stop in the fifth tile, but have to reposition a little bit. Once in position, I aim to the right between these two branches and throw a firebomb. Before the first ball is even destroyed, I'm already aiming for the second. This needs to be done relatively fast or you'll get hit by a wall of fire. After the cutscene, I aim between these two branches and throw another firebomb before rolling forward. The second ball is destroyed, so now it's time to roll through the branches. When I get to the bed of chaos, I have to aim because the lock on for it sucks. I would never die to a firestorm because the camera keeps doing a Resident Evil 180 degree turn. After shooting the boss, I dark sign to leave splitting for Bed of Chaos at 55 minutes and 18 seconds. Returning to the last bonfire I rested at, I just warp away to Fire Lake. Loading back into Fire Lake, I make my way to the catacombs. This area is kind of a footnote really. Skeletons pose no threat as they are easily just sprinted past. Main issue are all the doors with separate levers you need to use to open them. The first one is easy at least. While I push the lever with iframes, I quit out to skip it. Loading back in, the necromancers and skeletons are also reset so I can easily make my way out. Equipping the pike, I set up a meme roll because screw dealing with these other doors when they have a drop to the end. Walking off the edge, I perform a plunge cued roll into a meme roll like the Blighttown one. This time, instead of a swamp, there are bone wheels. Bone wheels are definitely worse. While strafing the bone wheels, I accidentally block one, but pretend you did not see that. Making my way past them, I jump into the pinwheel fight. This dude is a total joke, even with a bow. Well, as long as I hit. After he is defeated, I run to the ladder and open the gesture menu. This allows me to skip the banner from the right of kindling and get on the ladder faster. As I climb the ladder, I equip the sunlight maggot for your viewing pleasure in the Tomb of the Giants. There's not much to talk about here. I play it extremely safe after losing time in the archives. So safe that when I get down the patches, I drop and grab the bonfire before continuing on to Nito. My mental map of this place may be hazy, but I still know where I'm going. Playing it cozy in my pathing, I get past the dark section and now I'm in the last stretch. The stolen Mario enemies can just be sprinted around and the giant skeleton archer is easy to dodge. Pinwheels can be annoying, but I make it through to the fog gate where I equip full stone armor. As I enter the fight, I jump and perform a plunge fall damage cancel. That plunge can be tricky and this boss can be stinky. This run is a good example of Nino being super annoying. I don't start shooting because I'm scared of missing and aggroing the big skellies. It keeps doing the scream, and I keep crying. Eventually, Nito makes his way to me and I can start pelting away. With all this health I grabbed just for him, I spam away with the bow. Toxic buildup can be annoying, so I fat roll dodge the attacks. The bow may not do a lot, but after a bit of brainless R1 spam, Nito goes down. I dark sign away, splitting for a terrible Nito fight at 1 hour, 1 minute, and 28 seconds. Loading back in, I warp to Firelink where I'm going to drop down the hole to the Firelink altar. Sitting at the Lord Vessel, I offer the Lord Souls and the door to the kill of the first flame is now open. 
Gwyn, the final boss, lies beyond, and most of the time this is the easiest fight. But remember that ruling against shields where I can't parry with them? That one rule makes this fight miserable and I have no one to blame but myself. I made the rule, now I have to pay the price. RNG is going to be a big factor in this fight as I try to keep Gwyn in an animation loop. When shooting at Gwyn with a bow, he will dodge to the side and this can be chained. Only issue is when he chooses to randomly attack you instead of dodging. Personally, I find healing in Gwyn's fight ridiculously hard, so my 10 Estus is useless. Before worrying more about that, I need to get to Gwyn first. His knights outside the kiln are easily avoided, and if they hit, it is not too bad. Avoiding all of Gwyn's toasty knights, I enter the final boss fight. Dodging the opener, I start pelting away hoping for the hop animation loop. He starts to do it for a bit until he breaks out of it slashing me. After the minor gaping wound, I get the animation loop and it is going really well. With my low damage, I'm still seeing the health bar drain. He gets extremely low and breaks out of it again and I have some terrible rolls. Recovering, I get another animation loop that he breaks out of again. My dodges are going well until the third where I dodge terribly. Dying, I look at the health bar and the tears are flowing. I will blame the weird lock on rolling until the day I die. This is a huge time loss, but I don't think I need to explain that. I have to make my way for the kiln again and get to his boss fight. Second attempt, I start the same by dodging the opening attack. Shooting away, I get to experience the DS1 dumb hitbox grab attack. Getting up, I show that healing does not work too well in this fight. I just need to shoot away and get lucky with the animation loop. Taking another hit, I get the loop that lasts for a while. At the end, I get an attack that I dodge before getting another loop. Gawain goes down on the second try, but he should have gone down on the first. I love this game. With him dying, I pick the Dark Lord ending and wait for the game to let me out triggering it. During the load screen that sends me into New Game Plus, the run is over in 1 hour, 6 minutes, and 49 seconds. With some more optimizations, insane skill, and a whole lot of luck, this could be a sub hour run. Just because it is possible does not mean that I'm going to do it, are you crazy? The sub hour comes from my summa best and taking out safety strats. To get a run like that, not only do you need just luck, but also to run against your summa best. If you don't know what a summa best is, it is basically your fastest time ever for each split added together. Chasing that is not something I want to spend the next months doing. However, the fact that speedrunning this game with a bow can even get under an hour without ROM warps is really impressive. Speedrunning is about going fast, so picking a weapon that is opposed to that was not fun but unique. It was cool to route out an alternative timeline where speedrunners use the bow for some reason. And if you also think it is cool, then why not sub to be notified whenever I make a weird video? Also, check out the Twitch channel for when I, this is going to sound crazy, stream myself playing a video game. Lastly, thank you for wasting your time with me.